I'm Allison. I'm from Meadow Rose Quilting and I wanted to share my method of loading quilts on my Handy Quilter uh, studio frame. This is a compilation of a number of different methods that I've seen and been taught. This is what I do. This is what I teach in my studio. I have never had any problems. So let me show you. First thing is, I want to start off with my three layers of my quilt. I have my backing fabric. I have my batting and I have my quilt top. I like to have my backing and my batting a good 10 inches larger. So five inches on all sides. If my quilt is 50 by 70, my backing and batting should be 60 by 80 inches. I know that gives me lots of extra space. I don't have any nasty surprises and I have plenty of room to clamp my quilt backing when I'm using my ruler base and using rulers. So first thing I do, whether it's my own quilt, a customer's quilt, or I have a renter in the studio, is we will lay out all three layers over our frame. My backing, the way it's supposed to go, my batting, right side up, and my quilt top. And I want to make sure that I have sufficient fabric on this edge. I'm going to come around the front and show you the rest. So now I'm at the front of my quilt. I've laid out my three layers and I want to make sure that there is sufficient batting and backing behind my quilt. And if I look at the bottom here, I got lots of backing and I have just enough batting. So we'll see how this goes. Once I've got everything laid out and I know that everything is the right size or big enough, I'm going to take off my layers one by one so that I don't have any nasty surprises. You know that, rip this off, throw it on the floor, reload your top, go to load your top and you've rotated it and things don't fit. So here's what I do. I'm gonna fold over, I'm going to fold over. This is my top edge. I'm going to drape it over the back of the chair. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to my quilt, uh, quilt batting. Flip it over, fold it in half, flip it over. And I'm going to take that top edge and put it over the top. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to go back around to the back to pin the backing of um, my backing to my take up pole. I'm back at the back side of my frame. I will always, 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 99.9% .9 of the time, load my quilt backing with the selvages, that side from when it was woven to my uh, leaders. My selvage edges, my lengthwise grains runs parallel to my pole and it reduces stretch. Let me show you. If I were to load this edge, the crosswise grain, on my pole, I want to be careful that I don't stretch that fabric. So I'm going to be very, very careful loading. Then I would have my selvage edge, which is on the straight of, or lengthwise grain. If I was to load, and to me this is the more important part, if I was to load my selvage on my poles, I have no stretch. I just pin them in, no problem at all. But when it comes to using my clamps, if I have loaded this way and I pull on that fabric by putting my clamps on, I'm going to get stretch marks. You see those stretch marks? If I load my selvage on my poles, when I put my clamps on, I get very little in the way of stretch marks. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I do have the center, you can't see it, but I do have a mark marking the center of my backing or the, my pole. But what I want to do is I just want to find that generally. I'm not being super exact. I am just going to match up that center kind of with the center. I don't want to have a nasty surprise, get one side loaded, go to do the other, and I've run out of the leader. 
So I normally will pin top and bottoms matching. But what I'm doing right now is just real quick to show you. Once I have it all loaded and I'm done filming, I will probably come back and throw some more pins in, but then again, maybe not. So I'm just gonna sew, and what I'm doing is I am matching the edge of my selvage fabric with the edge of that leader fabric. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is I don't have to worry about whether my fabric is cut straight. I don't have to worry um, about keeping that layer from stretching, that edge from stretching if it was a crosswise grain. I always leave salvage top and bottom. If I'm going to piece my backing, I will sew with about a one and a half inch seam allowance. And then what I will do is I will um, just give it a quick press and then I will tear off that extra seam allowance that I don't need. So my backing is all pinned. I'm just gonna throw it down here and come back around to the other side. Okay, so I've got my uh, backing loaded to my take up pole. If you notice my mistake already, but actually I don't use it as a mistake anymore because of how I load. So let's just roll this up. I've engaged my ratchet. And all I'm doing as I'm rolling is I'm making sure that I have something flat here. I'm not looking for, I'm looking for wrinkles that I'm going to pull out, smooth out. Occasionally I'll go round to the back if there's any wrinkles and I'll just kind of smooth that out a bit. I'm not worried about the side edges. The reason I'm not worried about those side edges is that these edges, I know I've got a good five inches on either side. It may have been torn on one side and cut on the other and I'll have a nasty waffly edge. This way, I don't worry about it. I know I have plenty of fabric. Now, this is the cutoff. Can you see how straight that isn't? But this is the cutoff from another project that I was working on a wide back. I don't need all of that fabric, so I've cut it off and I'm gonna load another quilt. Let me show you how I do. So, what I want to do is I want to take my backing pole, my first one, the belly pole, and I'm going to take my leader and I'm gonna wrap it around. Wrap it around my quilt top pole. Make sure the edge of that fabric that fabric is nice and smooth. Then let's release this ratchet on the back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just gently unroll it. Now, if I had two selvage edges, one up here, one down here, I would definitely pin the selvage. But then okay, so I have rolled up my quilt backing on my take-up pole. There's only one problem. And as I roll this up, can you see what it is? I'm in front of my idler pole. I should always, always, always be behind my idler pole. So let's do this again. Because I had to stop the video because I made a mistake. All right, I have draped my, wrapped my backing, my belly, bar pole, my backing pole, the leader, I've wrapped it around my quilt top. And what I'm going to do is just release this, drape it over and pin. What I'm looking for here is that this is a nice flat level surface. If I pull it one way or another, I may get diagonal wrinkles. This is one of the reasons that I don't find the top, the middle of the top and the middle of the bottom, simply because my fabric may have been cut crookedly and I don't want to have um, any diagonal lines. Now I'm normally not a throw pins 
on the quilt yeah but this is faster I'm talking and I usually keep those pins in my mouth which is not a good habit to do so let's get these in real quick again I would probably throw my pins in just a little bit closer but you know what for this purpose I think it'll work All right, so this is pretty well matching down here. I'm gonna put this last pin in, and I think I'll just throw one more in here. Now, don't know if you can see there, but right here, I have an awful lot of extra fabric. I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see. All right, so I have a lot of extra fabric here, but at this end, I don't. Can you see right to the end here where my fingers are? I had very little. I don't worry about that because I know that my quilt backing is now straight, parallel, on grain and all the rest of it. Oh, oh look here. It's one of the reasons why I don't put pins on my quilts. All right, let's continue. Let's put this back so you can see the whole thing. Did I get it? There we go. All right, now what I want to do is get all of this fabric over to here. I'm going to roll up that batting. And if I wanted to, I could have cut that extra off, but I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, I'm just gonna keep rolling. And as I'm rolling, I'm checking for things with wrinkles, puckered spreads. Ah, looks pretty good there. We'll lock that ratchet, make sure my leaders are nice and straight. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to load my quilt top. Now remember I had my three layers, backing, batting, and then quilt top. I could load in that order, but I have recently started loading my tops. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dig down in my pile, get my top out, drape the top edge over my backing and kind of center it. I want to make sure I have about the same amount of fabric on both sides. Then again, I'm just going to match up the leader and the edge of my quilt. And I'm just going to bring those two together and pin within that quarter of an inch. So real quick, 30 seconds, don't time me, that close to. One, two, three, four. If I was thinking ahead and planning, I could machine base this together on my domestic machine. I could take one of my smaller leaders for my quilt and just space them together to hold all of them. Hold there. That's good enough. Let's pick up the rest of those pins. Make sure I haven't got anything there. Now, quick run around the back. I am going to let the weight of the quilt top and the friction of the quilt fabrics together and I'm going to roll this quilt top up. All right, real quick. And as I roll, I'm looking to make sure that the side edges of my quilt are pretty close together. If I had a very detailed quilt and maybe something with a center line that had to be uh, kept, straight, bigger quilts. I may check those seams, but for now, this will work. If I find that something is pulling, I may tweak it. I'm just looking to make sure that within reason, my quilt is fairly straight. That doesn't look very straight to me, but we'll work with. All right, that's all rolled up. Now it's batting time. Lift my quilt 
cup hole into the cradle poles, clean off some thread, grab my batting. Remember, I folded it in half and in half again. Just going to want to make sure that I have enough batting for my quilt top that they're in the right position. I think that'll do us, do us really, really well. Oops. Pull cradle down, pull cradle down. Now, at this point, what I want to do is I want to run a basting line down the length of my quilt. Oops. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to use the channel, horizontal channel lock on my uh, pro stitcher, Avante. And let's see how we do. The channel lock keeps me from moving my quilt or my uh, machine back and forth. I've got it on horizontal. I can only go horizontal. Now generally what I will do is, wait till I'm done stitching that off. So I've got my batting and my quilt backing anchored together. That's given me a line that's parallel to my frame to line up my quilt top. If I didn't take that time and I put my quilt top on kind of crooked, it would start crooked and it would end crooked. So this way I know there's a greater chance that my quilt is straight. It's going to start straight and hopefully it's going to end straight. All right, so now what I want to do is um, match up my quilt top to that edge. I'm going to throw a few pins just for speed, and I am going to pin the top edge of the quilt to that basting line I just did. And I don't need many pins. If this was a bigger quilt, or I knew that the quilt was kind of funky, uh, measurements in some way, I would find my center, measure half, measure half, and make sure that everything fit. Now what I want to do is I've taken my horizontal channel lock off. I want to baste that edge. Now, when I'm basting this first, line, batting line, my horizontal line. Before I even load my quilt, I'll set up my machine. I'll clean, I'll oil, put a new needle in, put the correct thread on that I'm using for the project. Then I will stitch that line, that basting line, with my new thread. I can feel underneath at a glance if the tension is okay. I can tweak as I'm going along there. But when I stitch my top to my batting and backing layers, it's another check of my tension. But if I had two parallel lines stitching, I wouldn't know which was my, my batting basting or my quilt top basting. So here's what I will do. Is I'm just going to stitch a little zigzag. to all my layers. I have one unit now instead of three separate layers. I very rarely will put the ratchet on my quilt top. As I advance, that quilt top will just naturally unroll. Every advance, I will probably lift up my front pole, my 
quilt top hole and just smooth out my batting. I'm not going to stretch it unless I absolutely have to, but just smooth it out and then um, just pop my ratchet, my poles back into the, the carriage again, the holder, and then just continue stitching. One more thing. When I am quilting this way, I find that I don't have to worry about my quilt starting and ending square. I just, everything just rolls. For example, I'll do this, then I'll be done. I'm just going to roll. You see how that top just unrolls naturally? I don't have to fight with it. When I'm done, I'll pop my ratchet down. I may take it up a notch. I may pull it like this. What I see that I'm going to have to do, I see that I have my seam line is not quite straight. I can see here that my seam line isn't perfectly straight. So I will be doing some massaging as I quilt this quilt. But for the most part, I'm good to go. Hope this helps.